Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yeah? All right, well, um, it is my pleasure to welcome everyone this afternoon. We have a few festivities planned, but first I want to start with the dignitaries. Um, <laughs> it's my pleasure to first introduce our state representative and longtime champion of all things Bolton, Kate Hogan. The next person may want to start a little bit earlier. It takes a while to get here. Hello, everyone. Hello, Bolton. I am so delighted to be here and would never miss the opportunity to say goodbye, Don. <laughs> You know, we are so grateful for your service over 15, 16 years. Tremendous. It's actually the amount of time I've been in the legislature. I've been able to use uh, Dawn both as a refuse and also someone that I'm able to really sit down and, and talk out issues with. And he's also distinguished himself in so many different roles uh, in the community. He's successful in managing, but also a great negotiator. You know he's being sent out to do things, get things done, calm things down, resolve and solve. And that's the kind of person you want as your town manager. So not only congratulations, Dawn, on what you've done over the last 16 years, congratulations, Bolton, on being so smart to have hired this guy. <laughs> you know that... that I don't want to take up too much time. I know it's hot and I know there are other people here, but. <laughs> but you know, my father would often say, and it reminds me of Dawn, may the winds of fortune sail you. May you sail a gentle sea. May it always be the other guy who says, this drinks on me. <laughs> Thank you, Dawn, and congratulations. Rolling right along with the dignitaries, I'd like to welcome our state senator, Robin Kennedy, up to say a few words about Don Lowe. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here in Bolton, but uh, for a sad reason, not the happiest reasons, although happy for Don, of course, of course. And all I can think is, Don, I hardly knew ye. You know, I uh, just just getting to the end of my first term here and uh, just getting uh, settled in, getting to know the, the communities that I'm so proud to represent, but uh, it's been so great to work with you over the last year and a half, and if I didn't know much about you, all I would need to do is look around the town of Bolton and see all the progress that's happened, the growth, uh, the building, to the listening to the residents and understanding both moving towards progress, but understanding change is difficult and change takes time, and, uh, from talking to constituents and, and talking to the residents here, I know you've really uh, managed that incredibly well, and it's not an easy task. So as my good friend and colleague, Representative Hogan, says, it, it takes a, a strong person, it takes the right person to fill this role. And Bolton certainly hit both, right on, both nails right on the head uh, with you. So uh, I know you have some rest and some fun in store. Uh, I look forward to our paths crossing in different ways down the road. Uh, but but hopefully this chapter next chapter ahead for you is the best one yet So congratulations on your retirement and it's such a pleasure and I look forward to, to working with the community and, and again my my friend uh, Rep Hogan the years ahead. So thank you so much Well um I, for one, am honored to be here as part of this celebration. Um, when the folks at Town Hall reached out and asked whether I'd be willing to say a few words about the person you know, who helms the ship, the brains behind the municipal operation we all call Bolton, um, I said, of course, because I would never miss an opportunity to sing Jenny Jacobson's praises. <laughs> I tease, I tease. Um, we know actually the person that we're here to honor today, the one and only, the much beloved, former acting conservation agent, Don Lowe. Let's give it up for Don. So 
In preparation for today, I reached out to folks at Town Hall to collect some reflections and reminiscences. And um, I heard something over and over again from the folks that work uh, for Dawn. And they said, Dawn Lowe always gives credit to his employees for the ideas that they bring to the table. Unless they're good ideas, in which case he takes the credit. <laughs> and so in true Dawn Lowe fashion, if anything in this roast makes you laugh, of course I thought of it. And if not, uh, you can just blame Michelle Carlisle because I think everybody else in Bolton blames Michelle Carlisle for, <laughs> for their problems. Um, listen, we know being town administrator is a really demanding job. It's a lot of hard work. You sacrifice time away from family. You sacrifice sleep. You sacrifice your well-being. Um, and you know, it takes a toll on your mental health. I heard about a town administrator who once was so confused that he thought that Mountain Dew counted as a form of hydration and that blueberry muffins were a f serving of fruit. Uh, well, I wasn't going to out you, Don, but that was Don Lowe. That was Don Lowe who thinks that. And you know, Don also, to this day, even as he's getting ready to leave, he's still thinking about ways to try to keep Bolton progressing forward. Um, I think Senator Kennedy mentioned that. He's done so much for the town, and even in these last few weeks, he's still thinking, what can we do? So um, I think this might be the first time this is being shared publicly, but this is a big development. As Don leaves his town administrator, he is ushering in a 300% increase in the amount of hair on select board meetings. <laughs> So we're, we're, we're coming for you, Stan. We're coming for you, Stan. <laughs> now, for, for this last little bit, I was hoping you all could help me out. Um, raise your hand if you've been to a select board meeting. Wow, I'm so sorry. That's a lot of hands that have gone up. OK, so that means you've all had the pleasure of sitting through the town administrator report, OK? so. How boring is the town administrator report? Well, word has it that it's being analyzed at Guantanamo as a replacement for waterboarding. <laughs> How boring is Don's town administrator report? That our animal control officer has approved it as a form of euthanasia for unlicensed dogs. <laughs> How boring is the town administrator report? And I got the green light for this one from Pam Powell, so blame her. How boring that before Kate Bayou came on as a member of the select board, Bob Zakansky decided to prepare her by sending her a stepladder and a noose. <laughs> like I said, blame Pam Powell. In all seriousness, Don, um, you've been a fantastic town administrator, a wonderful friend, a great mentor, and you've just done so much for the community, and nobody deserves a better retirement than you, so thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Um, I'll keep this short. Uh, I had some medical issues which sidetracked me for a couple of months, so I didn't have much time to prepare. But I just wanted to say um, I was the, on the search team that hired Don. And to everybody in Bolton, I apologize for that. <laughs> um, Don clearly was, was the number one choice when we did the interviewing uh, 15 or so years ago. And I've, I've worked with this gentleman uh, side by side uh, for those 15 years. And um, Bolton is absolutely has been blessed uh, with, with someone like, like Don. Now, I know we have citizens here. We have some folks from, from town hall, employees. I think the, the dedication of Don and, and how other people have, have eloquently said, you know, his management style, his inclusiveness, uh, his giving credit to, to, to those people uh, who work for him when credit is due. I think that, that in part uh, has made Bolton what it is. Uh, we hear some stories um, uh, from other towns of what goes on within their municipal government. Uh, we don't have any of those issues. 
Uh, I have to say, you know, to Don's credit and, and his management style and also the people that he's brought in uh, and nurtured, I, I'd say we have probably one of the best uh, town hall and, and entire town staffs uh, in any town or city in, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So, you know, thank you, Don. Uh, you're going to be missed. I guess Don knows me pretty well. I've never missed an opportunity to get in front of a microphone, even though I didn't think I'd be saying anything today. But again, I wouldn't pass up the opportunity. Uh, never thought I'd ever tell anybody this, but when Jenny mentioned that they were going to be having something for Don, I said, you know, maybe it's an appropriate time to bring this up. For those that don't know me, I'm Mike Savageo. I'm the building commissioner in Bolton. I've been here just a couple of months prior to Don being here all those years. Um, so I know Don well. I was here just prior to him. And uh, as the building official, you get the opportunity to meet a lot of people, go to a lot of houses, go to a lot of projects. Well, anyone in Bolton that's in town management, anybody that's in the community or anybody near the community knows that we had a uh, very big golf tournament at the International last year called the Live Tournament. I was responsible as the electrical inspector to go and inspect uh, everything that they set up. And I'm, a, I'm kind of like a fishing guy. So I went down there as they're setting up all the staging and they're redoing all the, all the sand pits and everything at the golf course. And I go down to inspect at the beginning, several inspections. And I meet John, the project manager, setting everything up. So I go and I see, I, I go and I see John and I meet him over at the clubhouse and we leave from the clubhouse and we start going around and, go, and I said wow this is pretty impressive I mean you have a live tournament you got the, the top golfers in the country coming to Bolton I said but you know be honest with you John I go it's kind of impressive I said but I'm a fishing guy give me a fishing pole I said but my brother He's a golfer. He's up at Manusinok. He used to be the president of Manusinok for a while. He's on the board over there. And I said, and I know someone else that enjoys golfing a lot. And I said, and that's uh, Don Lowe, our town manager. And he goes, Don Lowe? I go, yeah, you know Don? And he goes, no, I don't know him personally. He said, but I remember hearing his name. And I go, what was it about? He said, well... You know how we're up here doing the live tournament, and we might come here every year now. I go, yeah, I heard that. And he said, well, they're apparently going to take the golf course, and they're going to modify the golf course. And I said, well, I know that. I said, I heard that also. So while I'm going around with him, I tell him how I know how much Don likes to golf. And he says, and I said, so how did you hear of Don Lowe? He goes, Mike. He goes, I heard that he shot like a 74 up here once. And I'm like, come on. And he goes, no, Mike, he shot like I heard. I mean, he goes, Mike, could be a rumor, second, third hand, not from, you know, that's what I heard. I go, really? I go, Don Lowe? I said, town manager, Don Lowe, Bolton, shot a 74? Mike. Might be a rumor, I don't know. I said, look, I'm coming up here a couple more times. He goes, Mike, I heard they put him on a short list. I go, well, short list for what? He goes, well, we know how they're going to revamp the golf course. I said, yep, that's been a lot of talk for a couple of years. He said, he's on a short list of honorary people because of their positions in the community and their skills in golfing to be an honorary, be distinguished as an honorary member for one year at the new golf course when we're renovated. I said, Don Lowe, are you talking about the town manager from Bolton? He goes, Mike, again, 
Could be a rumor. I said, look, I'm coming back up here. Does he know this? He goes, no, I don't know. I, don't, I heard this third hand. I said, look, I'm coming back up here a couple of times. Do me a favor. I said, find out if he shot the 74 with a handicap, with his handicap. Now, anybody that knows golf, I'm not too familiar with it, but my brother told me, when you have a handicap, when you play a good player, I guess, and Don can correct me, when you play a good player and you're not a good player, right, you get extra strokes. And I said, well, what does that really matter? I said, because if he shot a 74 with his handicap, I said, if it was without it, this guy should be on the pro tour. So that's still an accomplishment. I'm impressed, but I'm not going to say anything. I leave. I go back like two weeks later. They're getting ready to finalize the place. I go up. Guy's not there. Another guy takes me around. I go up another time. Now I'm closing the place out for the final. I go back up. I asked him. I said, find out if it's from his handicap, if he shot it with his handicap. So he goes picks me up in the golf cart. We go around to do the final. Don't even talk, I don't even talk about it. And I'm like, wow, this place, if you saw it, if you went there, it's impressive. It's the staging, it's the beautiful white sands. I'm like, this is impressive. I said, hey, think, think, talk about impressive. I said, did you ever find out if Don shot that 74 with a handicap? He goes, yeah. I go, oh yeah? Yeah, it was with his handicap. I said, well, figures, because he'd be on the Pro Tour if it wasn't with a handicap. That's still an unbelievable, anyone that golfs will know, that's an unbelievable feat. He says, yeah, but uh, I found something else out. I go, what? They took him off the short list. I go, oh, why? Because his handy, he used his handicap. His handicap was probably too high. This is what I'm thinking. And he says, yeah, they took him off the short list, and now they've decided to take down all the buildings instead of modifying the buildings. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, we're going to condense the course. I said, what do you mean by condense the course? I don't understand. How do you condense a golf course? He says, well, it's easy, Mike. You knock down all the buildings, which we know they're doing. They started today, actually. He says, it's easy, Mike. He goes, you knock down all the buildings. And then you take like the 18 holes that we have and you reduce them to like a certain amount and we condense the course. And I said, and this is all because of Don Lowe getting taken off. I said, getting taken off a short list. And he says, Mike, he said, we found out that Don shot the 74. I go, yeah. Well, the owners from California who are sinking all the money in the modification got nervous because they figured that Don had a connection. They didn't, knew, they didn't know that he was retiring. He said so they wanted to make sure that he had no influence over the building permits that we would modify the building with because if he ever heard that he got taken off the short list of honorary members and it was to be because of his stature in the community for so many years as his position and his ability at golf. And I said, well, why would they take him off the, I don't understand it. And he said, bottom line is this, Mike, the owners got nervous and they decided when they did find out that Don was retiring, that they were knocking down all the buildings and condensing the course. I says, that doesn't make sense. He goes, Mike, he goes, I didn't tell you the reason why Don was taken off the list. I go, well, you kind of alluded to it. He used his handicap, and you know, maybe it was a high handicap. I don't know. I, think, I still think it's impressive. He goes, no, Mike. He goes, you know that 74 that he shot? I go, yeah, with his handicap, right? He goes, with a handicap. He got extra score to add on. I go, so what's wrong with that? That's still an accomplishment, or the guy would be on the Pro Tour. He said, that was for nine holes, not 18. He says, was, and then they got nervous when they found out he was retiring, so they said, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna knock down all the buildings, and we're gonna consolidate the course. And I go, well, what does that mean? He goes, well, you know what it means, knocking the buildings down. You're here looking at the first one going this morning. I said, yeah. He said, 
we're going to bring it down to a nine-hole course. I said, you know, I, ho I heard it was going to be one of the top ten golf courses when you're done in the country. He said, better than that. I said, better than that? He said, one of a kind. I said, it's going to be one of a kind? He said, yep. I go, what's that? He goes, it's going to be, we're going to consolidate it to a par 72 nine-hole course. I go, that doesn't, he goes, because Don has been in office in his position for so long, they're still nervous that he could still influence the build and permit aspect of this project. So now that they know he's retiring, they said that they're going to scale the project down, knock all the buildings down, make a nine-hole PA 72, so that if Don, in his retirement, gets a little bit better in golf, gets a couple of extra points or, you know, strokes, he'll be able to use his handicap to spell the rumor that he shot a 74 and be accurate in powering the course in the future if he gets a little bit better with a 74 for nine holes. So, so Don, you're going to have plenty of time to get a little bit better, and hopefully you will, in order to par the course. And uh, thank you for everything you've done, but in all sincerity, uh, this was all in, in fun. Uh, in all sincerity, Don, you've been here many, many years. I've been involved in other towns with town managers. I've been involved in the Board of Selectmen before at other communities. Uh, Don, what an accomplishment to be here, as Stan said, so many years. All those years, same place. That's a credit to this gentleman. That's a credit to this town. And Stan was right. We have one of the best town halls that I've ever worked in, and I've worked in several. The people that we have, the support that we had with Don behind us just made everything work. And we hear, and I'm sure everybody hears the comments out there, we work for the public. Don has always stressed that. And, and in all, uh, all sincerity, Don, I hope you really enjoy your, your, uh, your retirement. And uh, I'm sure you're going to get a lot better in golf because of the time you'll have. <laughs> If only, if only, if only I could add the length of that speech to my retirement. I wouldn't have to work another day in my life. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everyone who's here tonight. Um, I learned a long time ago in giving speeches that you don't start naming individuals because invariably you leave somebody out and you unintentionally hurt feelings and that's the last thing I want to do. But the one thing I will do, and not to steal from Brian, but I want to say a special thank you to Jenny. And it is true, without a good staff, a manager is nothing. You've got to have the staff, you've got to have the people, and, and we're very fortunate to have the people that we have here. Um, you know, I came here 15 and a half years ago. I never would have dreamed, come June 2024, I'd still be here. Uh, <laughs> in my first year, there was, I thought many times about, should I just run screaming in the middle of the night? But I didn't, I stuck it out. Nobody likes a quitter. So, um, it, this has just been a tremendous experience. I've gotten to meet so many wonderful people who live in Bolton. Uh, I have to say the level of volunteerism in Bolton is second to none. The number of volunteers that we have helping out, we, we couldn't be as successful as a town without our volunteers. Um, they, they mean so much to us, and I, I can't thank them enough. Um, so, again, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to talk to more of you individually. Um, I want to thank the, uh, every member of every select board that I've ever worked under. Um, I have learned something from each of you. I was hoping to learn some from Kate, but uh, um, I know Kate's going to be an excellent new, new select board member. Um, and uh, I do feel as though that um, I've been able to establish a, a positive working relationship with every member of the board that, that I've ever worked under, and I do appreciate the, the, the time and effort that every member has put in. You don't realize the time and effort that
goes into being a select board member if you're going to do it right. And, uh, and the people here have, have focused on doing it right. Uh, it's more than just two meetings a month, uh, an hour and a half or so on, on, on television. Though I will say when I started here, it was more like three, three and a half hours on television. And we did, we were able to shorten meetings over time. Um, and but not the town administrator. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. And I really was afraid that I was going to, you know, when, when I saw Senator Kennedy and Representative Hogan were going to be speaking, I said, well, it's going to be close to whether or not I'm the longest speaker. And then we had this spontaneous action of Mike coming up, so no, I'm not going to be the longest speaker. Um, so again, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to talk to everybody, uh, those of you I've already talked to and those I haven't had a chance to talk to yet. I can't tell you enough how much it means to me to have you all come out tonight. Um, our employees, our residents, my colleagues, um, you all mean a lot to me. Thank you. I don't have much to say, but I would like to invite everybody in for cake because we have a gigantic sheet cake and we'd like to not take it all home. But thank you so much, Don. It's been a pleasure to work for you, even though you don't get the credit for hiring me. Um, cause we, I, I, <laughs> I was hired behind Don's back while he was on vacation, um, but he still gave me the opportunity to um, step into Linda Day's enormous shoes. And I appreciate the opportunity and I've learned a ton from you. And I said this earlier today, the most important thing I've learned from you is to have a very well-stocked wine cabinet on Thursday evenings after select board meeting. So thank you all.